my freshman year of college uh, in 1999, two days before my 19th birthday. I woke up and I was soaked in urine. That's not usual. My limbs felt like lead and my head was just pounding, like there was a bowling ball rolling around there. I'd, I'd never experienced anything like that. I started to cry and I knew that I had had a seizure. I have always been healthy. I played sports all my life. I never broken a bone, never had stitches. And so I called my parents and I said, I think I just had a seizure. And that's where it started. And then they just started happening. So MRIs, long EEGs, angiograms. We started on Tegretol, then Dilantin, then Depakote, then Neurontin, Lamictal, Keppra, Briviact. I mean, the list goes on and on. And eventually, we found Lamictal on its own was able to control my seizures fairly well. So things were great until I got pregnant with my son. I knew there was a risk that with pregnancy, my seizures could return or increase. And this was where I was going back to 1999. And I was having to start over is how I felt. My husband was in Vietnam on business one time and I swore to him that I was gonna be okay and he could leave. And I had two grand malls that night and I just remember holding my belly and just praying that I, that because of this, my son wasn't going to have any issues. And so the whole nightmare just started again and I needed someone new to give me answers or to at least try. I think the personal story of Megan is really important and for every patient you have really have to listen to what they're telling you and I think that's what was missing for her and once I, I, I listened to her I realized that in fact she was misdiagnosed as having a different type of seizure and we, we had sort of proved that with, with several tests. Our first meeting with Dr. Lin, my husband and I both walked out and we're like, this is awesome. We've found our new doctor. I walked out of there just feeling like this could be something new. This could be something different. We could possibly begin to control what was going on again. One of the things we did when, when we first met with her is we really kind of educated her on all the options available. And we really did emphasize to her that, that surgery in her case is actually a very good option. There's always the thought that, you know, surgery would be difficult or challenging or may not be appropriate, but in reality, she's a, she's a great candidate. Meeting Dr. Lin and Dr. Vadera has been a blessing, and finding out I was a candidate uh, when nothing else has worked, when I've been on so many medications, and when you have to make the decision of, do I just live this life and accept that seizures are a part of my daily routine, or now there's technology out there that is being used successfully to cure people. And I feel confident with either decision. At UCI, in terms of the epilepsy department, we are doing really cutting edge therapies right now. We have a, a robot, we have um, specialized laser therapies and, and neurostimulation. And so what we like to do is empower the patients to uh, teach pa patients about all the options that there are outside of medication or once you've failed medication that there are surgical options available. In some of our patients who are monitoring for epilepsy, we need to find out where the seizures are coming from. And one of the ways of finding out where the seizure is coming from is actually putting electrodes inside people's brain. While we're trying to figure out where the seizure is coming from, this also gives us a, a very unique and only opportunity to record neural activity directly from the brain. And that's so critical. I was at UCI for a six-day in-hospital EEG. Dr. Len came in on the sixth day when I'm supposed to be going home. He said to me, though, you can't live on an anecdote, but you can live on hope. And he said, we have to have hope. He just tries to be where you are. It's not like you come to my office, I give you a slip of paper that says, here's your refill, we'll see you in a couple weeks or a couple months, and there you go, and you come back and we we'll do the same thing all over again. 
we look at this and we say, what can we do? What's an, our, our next step? And, and it's that continual fight for the answer. In some patients, it will be complete cure, but in other patients, it will be just making my side effects better, making me less depressed with the medication, make me less sedated so I can do more things with my child. We're trying to better somebody's life, not just better somebody's seizure. We are a world-class center in terms of the types of treatments we offer, the type of care that we provide. In Orange County, we're the only level four epilepsy center. In the state of California and the country, we have really pioneered a lot of exciting techniques and, and uh, treatment options that, that I think really set us apart when you, when you look at what types of things we're, we're able to offer. UC Irvine Health is definitely some place that I would recommend for someone who is seeking answers, who is lost because you do feel like you are connected in some deeper way than a doctor-patient relationship. And that is so truly valuable. UC Irvine Health really has been something that has changed our lives for the better. <laughs>